We learn English grammar with a goal, that is to do better in our formation of sentences and obviously this is another point for which English grammar is a must for us to learn, and that is to fish your grammar questions in the exams. But the problem is to do fair in exams you have to learn some chapters in English grammar which are a bit non-conventional, which aren't taught so frequently in your syllabus. Just consider of what you are going to learn here today. You are going to learn the sequence of tenses. But why? The question is why to learn sequence of tenses? It's because when you do narration changes or transformation from direct speech to indirect speech, there one thing that comes to be very handy, very useful. That's the rules of change for reported verb. So there, an adjustment of the tenses regarding the reporting verb and reported verb that you have to make. You learn the change of tenses, their rules, what tense to place for which tense. You have learned all of them. But have you ever considered why the changes in tense occur in direct and indirect speech? Obviously, there is some theory, there is some logic behind this. And today, we are going to learn that logic in the form of the sequence of tenses here in this discussion of Siksha Mantra. So, let's begin our discussion. The sequence of tenses. Now, the question is what is the sequence of tenses. So, have you ever considered what sequence we are talking of and how it comes handy for the uses of tenses, particularly in narration change? So, it comes from the point when we use a principal clause and a subordinate clause, that means in a complex sentence yes dear friends when in a complex sentence you use a principal clause and subordinate clause one or more subordinate clauses as you know so there an adjustment of the tenses is required actually the tense of the subordinate clauses follows the tense of the principal clauses so if you notice which tense we are using in the principal clause. You can detect very easily which tense to use in the subordinate clause and that balance is called the sequence of tenses. That means when the principal clause is in past or in present or in future, which tense to follow for the subordinate clause, that's the sequence of tenses and in our later stages of learning, we we'll learn how it's handy for narration change. Which relation does it share with the narration changes? We we'll learn all of them step by step. But before we shift to the rules and the sequence, uh, let me show you something here. Probably it would be of much help, much use for you. So, when we interchange direct speech into indirect, there are some terms that we use. Just learn it first. It's very essential to learn the sequence of tenses and then set to the direct indirect speech or the narration change. It's, it's very essential. So, be it direct or indirect, 
there's some terms that's associated to them that is a reporting verb and reported verb so reporting and reported for these two verbs we have to make an adjustment of the tense for these verbs only now reporting verb it comes in which clause as you know reporting verb they always come in principal clause whereas the reported verb it comes in subordinate clause so for principal clauses we use this reporting verb and the tense that this reporting verb gets actually detects the tense of the reported verb that is the tense of the subordinate clause so reporting verb is the principal clause which detects the tense of the subordinate clause that is the reported verb so this is the simple theory of which the tense that we use in indirect and direct speech depends so here if you learn these rules these sets of rules for the sequence of tenses you are going to find it very easy when you learn direct and indirect speech or when you change the modes of narration so let's begin the uh, learning of our rules so first we are going to learn the first set of rules but before we shift to them we have already discussed about uh, the principal clause the subordinate clause and we have already discussed that those subordinate clauses follow the rules of the tense of the principal clause but not for all subordinate clauses most of the time it's applicable to adverb clauses of purpose and noun clauses just follow it i'm i'm making a limitations here adverb clauses of purpose not all the adverb clauses and also the noun clauses so for them this rules is applied very frequently so i am not saying that uh, for other clauses uh, we don't follow these rules these rules are applicable to all the clauses but most of the time for relative clauses it's not uh, so much helpful so adverb clauses of purpose and noun clauses where we find these rules useful very very frequently so let's uh, begin our learning for the rules and uh, this is the first rules that we are going to learn here rules 1 the past tense in the principal clause is followed by the past tense in the subordinate clauses so very simple rules here first we are considering the principal clause if the principal clause is in past tense the subordinate clause would also be in past tense a very very simple fact principal clause and subordinate clause if the principal clause is in past tense the subordinate clause would also be in past tense so this is the simple sets of rules that we'd have to follow he replied that he would come just have a look at these sentences replied so this is the principal clause he replied and this principal clause gets the verb replied which is in past tense and now what happens the subordinate clause that he would come yet the verb is would come and we formed it in past tense as well so this is the rules which detects the tense of the reported verb in indirect speech as well there you have learnt it if the reporting verb is in past tense the reported verbs would also follow the past tense of similar kind so this is why the rules is there 
in direct and indirect speech this is why if a reporting verb is in past the tense of the reported verb is changed it's only for this rule so this is the first rules that we have learned and now we are going to learn the second rules so before we sit to the second rules uh, you have to remember that uh, there's also some exceptions to this rules how we'd get two exceptions here the first exception is it sometimes happens that the principal clause is in past tense the principal clause is in past tense the rules that we have learned in rules 1 yet the subordinate clause gets a present tense how is it possible newton discovers that force of gravitation makes apples fall so newton discovered discovered simple past tense yet we are using that the force of gravitation makes apple fall actually it would have been discovered and not discovered so newton discovered that the force of gravitation makes apple fall so here the verb is in present but why it's because the force of gravitation makes apples falls it's a universal truth yes dear friends whenever it would present a universal truth in the subordinate clause it doesn't matter whether the principal clause is past or present or future it would always be in simple present form that's it and this is our exception number one so we have another exception in the form of exception number two so what exception would find here when the subordinate clause is introduced by then so this exception is applicable only when the subordinate clause is introduced with then so there might have been past tense in the principal clause that doesn't matter it it doesn't matter at all it may be followed by any tense required by the senses in the subordinate clause so what sense the subordinate clause demands it gets that tense it doesn't matter whether the principal clause is in simple past just uh, have a look at this principal clause it's in simple past he helped but in the subordinate clause as it's introduced with then he helps his own children he helps so here we are using simple present just uh, have a look at it it's not following the normal rules present in our grammar the principal clause in simple past so the rule says that the subordinate clause must be in past tense but it's in present why because the situation is demanding it it gets introduced with then and what the situation demands he helps his own children he never stop nobody ever stops helping their own children we always help our children it demands simple present and we have to plus it if the situation demands past we'd use past if it demands future time would use future time that doesn't matter what the principal clause is only when the subordinate clause is introduced with then so this is the exception number two and now we'd shift to our next rules that is rules two now what it says a present or future tense in the principal clause may be followed by any tense required by the senses. If the principal clause is in present form or future form, obviously the subordinate clause 
may be produced with any tens that you require to use. So according to the sense you want to produce in your sentence, you may use the tense. There is no burden if the principal clause is in simple present or future. How is it? Just uh, have a look at these examples. He thinks, simple present, that she was there, simple past. There is no burden. We may use simple present or simple past or simple future or present continuous, past continuous, future continuous, whatever is demanding because we have one thing here. We have the principal clause in simple present form. So when he will think it's in simple future form, the verb of the principal clause is in future form, that she is here, we are using simple present tense. It's also not an issue. That's why in your direct and indirect speech, it's said if the reporting verb is in simple present or simple future, you don't have to make any change for the reported verb. The reported verb would be used in the same tense that's it in direct speech. So this is why the rules are, is there. It's the base of that rules and now we are shifting to another exception. So sometimes this rules is broken as well, but how? In sentences where the subordinate clause denotes purpose, it's, it's very, very vital. It's applied only when the subordinate clause denotes purpose. So, if the verb in the principal clause is present or future, the verb in the subordinate clause must be present. It might be in present or in future, but the subordinate clause must be produced in present. I eat that I may live. So the purpose of eating is to live. I shall not him that he may live. It doesn't matter whether the verb is in simple present or the verb is in simple future. When it speaks of purpose, you have to use it in simple present. That's it. And you have to remember it keenly, just don't forget for, for many occasions these sentences creates confusion. Why? Because we forget that we are speaking of those subordinate clauses which denotes purposes. That's, 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 that's the vital point, purpose. Subordinate clause that denotes purpose. If you remember this clue, you aren't going to get confused anywhere for using the simple present form with those subordinate clauses. So let's uh, shift to our next rules, that is uh, rules number five. So when some phrases such as if only, this phrase, wish that, what if, it is time, when such phrases are used in a sentence. The clause that follow it are always in the past tense. If only, wish that, what if, it is time. Just uh, remember them. I'm uh, making star in red for them. These phrases. You have to remember these phrases. Wherever you get these phrases, you can follow the simple rules. The simple rules of what? That the clauses that follow it are always in the past tense. Like I wish. Don't go after this wish as simple present. 
and uh, you have decided that the verb would be in simple present it's not like that as there i wish wish is used so i could eat another ice cream using simple past is a must remember here using simple past is a must because you get wish that so again remember these four terms these four phrases if only wish that what if and it is time so this is how you would learn the rules and this is how you have to make an adjustment in the uses of tenses for direct indirect speech and that's why the sequence of tense is so very important for you to learn so let us stop the discussion here we are returning very soon with another fresh discussion till then bye bye happy learning